upset about that. Kobe and his daughter in the building, breaking down the game. I love, I love this. Uh... Hey, everybody. Um, I had to get off the internet yesterday. I, it became too much. I, um, I posted something on my community tab earlier yesterday because I think I was just in shock. I, first things first, yesterday, like early afternoon, my daughter walked into my room and she was like, mommy, did you hear Kobe Bryant got killed? And I'm like, stop lying. That's not true. That's not true. No, that's not true. My daughter is, she's, she's a basketball player. She's an athlete. She runs track. She does basketball. And she was like, no, mommy, look. And so she still calls me mommy. Yes. And so I got on the internet and TMZ had it on there. Now I was reluctant to believe it because I went on to CNN. I went on to all the news outlets and they were still playing their regular stuff. Nobody had broke in to say anything. So I'm like, you know what? It's just same old TMZ, the same people that said that, that Lil Wayne died. And he, you know, I just, I was like, no, that's not true. And then I started seeing the rumblings a little bit more, all these other different things. I went on Twitter and I started seeing Kobe trending. I'm like, Lord, no. And then I found out that I get, he was, you know, he perished in a helicopter, in his helicopter. I was still trying to figure out how TMZ found out before everybody else, which, which I'll talk about in a minute, why that bothers me. So, but when news started to spread and it spread pretty quickly, um, there was this different conflicting reports. It said that five people for the longest time, they were saying that five people were on board and no one survived one of them being Kobe. So at this point, nobody really knew who else was on board. Well, of course, the pilot, but nobody else. So all these different stories started to come out. First, I heard that, you know, um, I don't know if you guys heard this, that Rick Fox was on board. I mean, like people were saying Rick Fox was on there and, and Rick Fox started trending. Then people were saying that all of his daughters were on board. It didn't come out until later that there were actually nine people on board. And some of these, of course, included, unfortunately, girl, little girls. And G Gigi was on board, as well as another family, and I believe another family, and they were on their way to uh, a travel game. You know, if you are from that world of AAU, any of that, you know, they constantly have games on the weekend. And Kobe was known to use his helicopter because of LA traffic, they would just kind of, it was not unusual for Kobe to um, move around like that. And so when this news broke and it was confirmed, it just hit me. It hit me. I don't know how you felt, but it just shook me to the point where I just was like, I can't, I can't read the internet anymore. I gotta just get off. So I literally logged out of everything and I just watched Netflix. I, I didn't want to watch any news reports. I didn't want to watch anything else. I didn't want nobody telling me more. I just wanted to just step away from it. And I think what shook me was the fact, not just Kobe getting killed, because that was, that was, a, that was a shock to the system. It was, I kept thinking about his wife and how something like this, and even, and, and, and please understand, People die every day. I, I know that. And tragedies like this, not like this, but tragedies do happen where they may happen in multiples and maybe multiple family members. But this just kind of shook me because all I could think about is not only did Vanessa just lose her husband, but she lost her daughter. They have four daughters and she lost her daughter. So what a double knife in the heart and how that must feel for anybody, the suffering that it had to cause. And also the fact that all this erroneous information was being put out here saying that all her daughters were on board, you know, um, there were other families that died too. So I don't want to ever forget that part of it either. There were several, I mean, there were a lot of people were suffering today because 
Um, I believe there was a, uh, he used to be a former uh, University of Houston uh, baseball player. He was on board as well as his wife and his daughter. Like, remember, these were people that were heading to a girls basketball game. So just how many people were impacted by that very tragedy is insurmountable in, in my opinion. Now, when things like this happen, you know, I often, I just don't understand any of it. And it doesn't have to be somebody famous. I, you know, I, I live right outside of Chicago. So it's not unusual to see on the news, you get on the news, you watch the news. I try not to even watch the news anymore because sometimes it's just too much to bear. I have to even just turn that off when somebody's getting killed, somebody's dying. And it's just like, you keep thinking about like the fact that it used to be a time where death seemed like it was just for older people. I know that sounds silly to some of y'all, but it just seemed like it was just meant for when you got older. Right. But it just comes to young people far too often now. And it, it just, it just humbles you and it, it just makes you reflect on your life in general. And when I saw, you, you know, before I got off, before I logged off and I saw the, the outpouring of support and, and people talking about Kobe, I had to remind myself to just let that happen because oftentimes, you know how it happens, what, what happens when people die, right? You, you, I, you struggle with this are they, why are they making it about themselves, right? It becomes about them more than it is about the person that died. But I, I do understand that human component of it, right? You're trying to show the world how this person was connected to you, how you are connected to this person. So I lost, of course, of course, basketball players, NBA players were posting pictures of them and Kobe and their relationship because that was a, that was a real thing, right? That was real these men interacted, they had friendships, they, they, they played together for years and years and years. All of that is understandable, every last bit of it, all right? And then there were just everyday people that were connecting to Kobe. And, and, and even myself, and I think about it, see, I, like I said, my, my, my daughter plays, uh, my partner of five years, he played in college, he's a basketball guy, his son plays AAU right now, um, he's, he still plays every Tuesday he goes and he plays, right. He's in this league. And so we were sitting there talking about, it. it's like, I don't think that these young folks will ever truly understand how it was to watch a person like Kobe and a person like Michael Jordan play in real time. Like they'll never truly understand what that is to see in real time, to know in real time, how these guys played and how Kobe was as close as the closest thing you can get to Michael Jordan as possible. Some of them saw him closer to the end of his career when he retired, but I'm talking about in real time when this kid was fresh out of high school and playing and how you look back on that. You're like, wow, I got to witness that. Just like I was in high school when Michael Jordan played that game with the flu. I saw that. I went to the rallies when the Bulls won. I went to every rally downtown Chicago. So I feel blessed to know that I was able to live during the time where I saw that in real time. And the young ones, they have LeBron and they have the others, but you'll never be able to truly understand that Kobe. And I'm glad that people are reminding themselves and remembering just how, how amazing this guy was as a player and how he took the game seriously, how he was a student of the game, even to this day. And the way I looked at him and his daughter, and I used to always kind of think to myself, he ain't gonna never get no boys. So he might as well, you know, just invest in those girls. And the, the oldest was not interested at all, but Gigi was. And how he would be at the games with Gigi, talking to her, literally talking to her through the game as everything was happening. If you've ever watched any of his videos where he would like dis dissect games and things like that, you'll understand what I'm talking about. That's what he did. And so he would do that with her. So that clip that I showed you at the beginning is Kobe. I think that was like December 2021st or something like that. Not too long ago, maybe a little over a month ago, where he was, again, talking through a game with her because she played the game and how they connected in that way. Um, what I also am so glad about is that, you know how when people pass, they transition, they die. 
all of a sudden the world just like, oh my God, that was great and it was wonderful. And, and they want to give them all these accolades. And you're like, you know, y'all didn't feel, y'all didn't do that when they were alive. The truth of the matter is Kobe earned every last one of those accolades. So whatever you hear in the last, in the next few days about Kobe and his accolades, he earned every last one of them. They're not given to him just because he passed on and he died. That's no shade to anybody that's passed on. But I'm just saying everything you will hear about Kobe is because he earned every bit of those accolades because he was just that important to the game. He became a one name thing. When people are like Jordan, Kobe, that was earned. All right. That was earned. You know, of course, a few of them folks had to try to like bring up like some of the other stuff that happened in his past and stuff like that. And they tried to like sprinkle that in there. But I'm glad that it was overpowered by the fact that the man, he was, he was a dad, he was a powerhouse. And even in his bigness and how big he is, he was just on his way to coach his daughter's basketball game. He loved that. He loved the next you know, the next chapter of his life, he loved doing that. And so I can appreciate that. And I, and, and, and I feel a little better knowing that he, you know, was with his daughter, even though, like I said, my heart just breaks for Vanessa. I, I'm my heart and I'm praying for every last one of those families who've just been, their lives have been decimated by this tragedy and all his friends, of course. And, and I also think about his parents who I, somebody might be able to chime in and tell me, I, I knew at one point they were estranged, that they weren't speaking. And I hope that that was resolved at some point too, because I do remember that there was some kind of, uh, there, there was some estrangement between his family, his, his parents and himself. So I was hoping, I'm hoping that that was resolved before his unfortunate demise. But I am, I'm, I'm, I'm I'm back on the internet today because I I couldn't do it yesterday. I could not really take in the fact that this man and his daughter perished in a helicopter accident. And I also had to learn something. This is a lesson for me that I had to learn. You know, I hated the way TMZ put that stuff out there really quickly. And, And I have to learn myself that sometimes it's important to just step back and wait. And and you just want to, some people just want to be first and they be wrong and they just want to go out there and report it and they don't have all the facts sometimes. Whereas I had to stop and say, you know what? Just wait, just wait. Firstly, because I was hurting and also because we had, we didn't even really know everything. And there was some people jumping out there and I heard people saying that all his daughters got killed. I'm like, people are suffering right now. You're putting out erroneous information. People are saying Rick Fox died and Rick Fox wasn't dead. Anyway, I'm going to leave you guys with a clip that I found about Kobe talking about how he wanted to be remembered because I think it's important to remember his life and his legacy and what he left behind. And like I said, I'm praying for everybody everybody involved. And I hope this just reminds us to just understand that it doesn't matter how much you have. Life is so precious and you don't know the time or the hour guys. How do you want to be remembered? What, what matters to you in this whole discussion of, okay, Kobe's last year. What do you want people to think of? I've always said that I wanted to be remembered as a player that didn't waste a moment, didn't waste a day. And, uh, um, I felt extremely blessed um, by the God-given talent. But at the same time, I didn't take take it for granted at all. And so if I could be remembered as a person that was born with a lot of talent, but did everything he could to try to overachieve, and lived every day as if he was the 12th guy on the bench, you know, I think that's a very powerful message to have and something that Hopefully the players that are now and players that will come later um, choose to embody as well.